Today I'd like to talk on the topic, why do we need to get baptized? It's not just a ritual. It's not just an, a, a good idea that uh, people came up with. But I would like to show you from the biblical perspective that the idea of water baptism came from our Lord Jesus Christ. And we as believers, we follow this not just idea, but it's a command. So first point or question is, what is baptism? I'm glad that many people who shared their testimonies, they have already gave the answers through their testimony. For example, uh, one uh, lady, she said, it's the most important decision. You are choosing intentionally your Lord and your God. Some people tell me, I don't believe in God. I don't serve God. I am not a religious person at all. I'm neutral. But it's actually not true. It, you cannot be neutral. According to the Bible, which is the Word of God, and we fully believe that it's an absolute Word of God, the Bible says that you will for sure serve a master. It's either God or some, something or someone who is opposite of God. So either you believe it, either you acknowledge or you don't, but you for sure have a master in your life, someone who you serve. That's why when you choose to get baptized, you make an intentional decision that I choose Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior and this is the most important decision you can make in your life is to choose God to be your personal Lord and Savior second point what is baptism is a public declaration today in front of many people not just people from our church this group of people, they were publicly declaring to everybody, I am not ashamed of my faith. I believe in Jesus Christ and I'm not ashamed and I'm publicly declaring in front of everybody that I choose to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Next point is baptism. It's a covenant that every person makes with Jesus Christ. So it's a covenant relationship. You, you're not just someone who is attending a church for curiosity, but you have decided to make a covenant with your Lord Jesus Christ. So it's a very serious step and it's a personal decision. We as Christians, we believe that it has to be your personal decision. That's why we don't baptize babies. Because babies, they cannot decide for themselves. Parents, they make the decision on their behalf. But when they will become adults, we don't really know what will they decide for themselves. So I am so happy that today all these people they have decided to make that step. Second question is, why do we need to get baptized? I'm, I don't know, if I would ask anyone who is present here today, why do we need to get baptized? Do we know? So first, it's because Jesus, he himself, he was baptized. And we follow his example. Second is because it's a command. And I would like to pause right here. Matthew 28, 19, it says, therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them. These words, they were said by Jesus Christ. He said, go. He said, make disciples. And then he said, make sure you baptize them. And then another passage I would like to read, Mark chapter 16, verse 16. Anyone who believes and is baptized will be, let's say it all together, saved. Anyone who believes and will be baptized. 
So it's a command that came directly from our Lord Jesus Christ. It was not invented by a church. I'm so happy guys that you understood, you realized that it's an important step in your life. It's not just our church tradition. It's a command. Whoever believes and whoever will be baptized, you will be saved. Another point why we get baptized, because disciples of Jesus Christ, they taught and they baptized as well. Next question, next point is, what are the requirements for baptism? If I want to get baptized today, what am I supposed to do? Number one requirement is repentance. Acts chapter 2, it says, Peter was preaching and he said, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So once again, it's the very, very first step before you make a covenant with your Lord, before you get baptized, you personally, as we all think that we're, we're, we, we are not criminals, you know, we didn't do anything bad. But the Bible says that everyone have sinned and we felt short of the glory of God. Which means that if you don't acknowledge God, if you don't serve God, if you don't believe in God, you are already a sinner. So you don't have to do much to sin. One of the greatest reasons why people will be judged at the end of everything is for unbelief because they did not believe so in order for you to believe you must first admit and acknowledge that in God's eyes I am a sinner in God's eyes I cannot help it I cannot change myself I cannot transform myself i am in need of a savior that's why i come to jesus christ and i admit and i repent that's first step step number two is faith we're called the people of faith you cannot please god without faith you can be kind you can be gentle and generous but if you don't have faith and it has to be your own faith, your personal faith, not your mom's faith. I'm glad, like Christina, she said that I didn't want to get baptized because of my friends or because maybe uh, my mom or someone is pushing me. It was my personal choice, intentional decision. It was my faith. And that's why I chose to be baptized. Next reason is discipleship requirements for baptism I realize that I want to become a disciple of Jesus Christ those who were following Jesus they were called disciples not church attendees disciples the reason why they were called disciples is because they were constantly learning and doing copying everything that Jesus did so I would like to remind you guys that you are you as disciples of Jesus Christ were still, were called to grow spiritually, to mature spiritually. I encourage you to continue, attend Bible studies, attend church. I know that you will have discipleship level two, where all of you are invited to come back to a classroom where you will continue to learn and grow spiritually. And... Lastly, I would like to give a warning after baptism. I think sometimes when baptism, the day of baptism, it's such a huge celebration for everybody. But what happens after baptism, we don't always know and often we forget that the Bible says the devil, he's chasing. He's chasing whom to destroy. 
and sometimes temptations they're much stronger after the baptism so I have like five recommendations I have an advice for all of you guys so it's very basic but if you will follow if you will take it to heart it will be a huge blessing to you so listen carefully I will give you five points and then I will ask you what are the five points ready okay point number one make sure to feed off the Word of God feed off the Word of God I know it's very basic but trust me not everybody will not many people actually believe that it's as important set reminders to yourself if you need help maybe you can ask for help but make sure you read the Word of God either in the morning or in the evening because uh, I know that many different sources they will compete for your attention Make sure that the Word of God stays your number one source. Second thing is temptations or a mentor. Make sure you find someone spiritually who you trust, who is spiritually mature, and you ask them to be your spiritual mentor. Potentially it could be your parents or someone else that you look forward, you, you respect. And you give them the right to text you, to ask you how you are doing spiritually, to check on you, to ask you uncomfortable questions. Don't think, don't be so self-confident that I got it, I know it all, you know, I can do it on my own. No, give the opportunity for someone else to stand next to you and to be your spiritual mentor and to help you as you are making these first steps as believers in Jesus Christ. Third advice is friends. I know you all have friends and I know that for some of you friends it's so important but I want you to know the Bible says it's a warning to everybody. Bad companies, they corrupt good morals. Even though your parents, they trained you well, they raised you well. Church, Sunday school teachers, they did a good job as well. But remember, your friends, they will have such huge impact on you. So if you are surrounded by bad friends, if you see those red flags, don't tell this to your parents. Come on, let's try this. Let's do this. If they listen to on Christian music, if they're like cussing around you and you know that whatever they're doing, it's wrong. Do everything that is in your power to change that crowd. Don't be around them. Fourth point is ministry. Ministry. Sam, he already testified that if you're not involved in ministry you will be involved in something else it's impossible not to be involved in anything every morning when you get up before you got dressed you're already thinking in your head what am i gonna do today sometimes before you finished doing what you have been doing you're already thinking what am i gonna do next so it's impossible not to do anything you will do something for sure otherwise life gets really boring that's why when you think if you think that Christian life is boring you got your answer right why do you think some people think Christian life is boring just because they do absolutely nothing in their Christian life that's why I strongly encourage you guys to make sure to find a ministry. Don't just wait for an offer for someone to come and just beg you, hey, can you help here or there? No, you go and you find them and you present yourself and you make yourself available and tell, I want to serve my God, my Lord, 
my church, but primarily my God. It will help you spiritually. It will hold you spiritually. And once again, it's not just my ideas. It's all from the scripture. I just don't have, I don't want to take too much time to read all the passages. And the last one, we already talked about it. Be a disciple. Continue to grow. Don't, don't think, well, baptism is my final destination. No, 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 no. Baptism is your beginning it's not your final destination some people will relax or chillax after baptism no 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 don't chillax it's the beginning of your journey so make sure you continue to grow spiritually that's it guys just five points can we turn off the screen Thank you guys. So what are the five things you have to do after water baptism? Just raise your hand. Feed off the word. Feed off the word of God. Number two. Good mentor. Find a mentor for yourself. Number three. Have good friends. Be surrounded by a healthy crowd number four serve serve find a ministry in church and number five be a disciple let's give them a round of applause they did a great job thank you guys i'm very very happy for you and i'm sure your friends your spouses, your parents are proud of you.